according to the golden rule, you can't truly love yourself until you love your neighbor. We're, we live in such a selfish... How would I know that, though? Just, how would I know that, though, just by reading that? Well, you would know it from reading it, but you would also know it through your imagination. See, in our culture, what we see, we say is, you're asking a wonderful question. What we say is, you can't love others until you first truly love yourself. Yeah, you hear that a lot. We hear that a lot. Because that's the way we feel. After all, we're materialists and relativists. And we're the most material thing about ourselves. Do people really have to learn how to love themselves? No, I don't think so. Um, well, let's put, let's give an example. I think avoiding pain is like the basis of that. We have Perhaps, to but, know how but, to love. But let's talk about this for a second. What about a terribly depressed person who spends her life or his life thinking from day to night, woe is me, woe is me? Is that a form of loving yourself, even though it, it manifests itself in depression? Yeah, because you're thinking more about how you feel about Who? yourself. You're only caring about yourself. Now, it may not be your fault right. in the case of some, sure, some chemical enough. imbalance in your brain, but that's how it manifests itself. You're only thinking about yourself. And how your behavior affects the people around you. You're not thinking think about that. that. I, don't, I don't think depressed people are that worried about it. Depressed people do some horrible things to other people. That's true. I mean, isn't it true that all these guys that go into grade schools and shoot them up are terribly depressed people? Yes, generally. Woe is me, woe is me. So the traditional Western view, again associated with Plato and Aristotle and Moses and Jesus, etc., goes something like this. You can't love yourself in real terms unless you love others. I mean, isn't that really the basis of charity? Charity isn't just for other people. It's also for yourself. Because for the first time in your life, you have good reason to care about yourself. Because of the good that you're doing. But we say the opposite. We say, you can't love others until you love yourself. Jesus and Moses and Plato and Aristotle say, human beings do not have to learn to love themselves. We love ourselves all the time. We have to love others first before we can truly love ourselves. Before we can really deserve to love ourselves. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Yeah. Are we trying to make ourselves worth loving by that's the, being good to other people? That's the ec excellent, excellent. Trust it better than I could. Well, don't you have to actually learn to love first? Well, what is love? You have to learn what is the meaning of love. So what do you think the meaning of love is? You can't act to love unless you understand what it means. So what does it mean? Well, it, it, all abstract ideals are hard to describe. But does it have to do with caring about other people? Yes, and it has to do with caring about yourself. It's like well, the question is, do you deserve to care about yourself if you don't care about other people? Not at all. Well, not according to the traditional view. But in America, we say it is, that you have to concentrate on yourself. For, for Moses and Aristotle, Christ and Plato, if you begin to the process of loving yourself, Hacker, when will that process end? 
and you can begin to love others. Never. Well, that's the point. Now, you, you, know, you disagree, and clearly contemporary American culture disagrees with that view. But that's the old view. That if you get on the road to loving yourself, that's a road that you will never uh, get off. That's a ride that you'll never get off. You're already doing that. And the supposition is, is that you will never stop doing it until you give up yourself to others. That doesn't mean that you stop loving yourself. It means now, for the first time, you can say, I deserve to care about myself. Somebody mentioned to me that um, there's a platinum rule that's different than the golden rule that goes like, do unto others as they would have you do unto them. Oh, well, that's horrible. They get, they get... That's just horrible. Well, I mean... Some people have said it's kind of nitpicky or whatever to think like that, but... It's not nitpicky, picky, it's evil. <laughs> do unto others as they would have you do unto them. So, so they're, they're, they're worried that you're going to force your will on somebody else if you love your neighbor as yourself. What would you say to somebody who, that, who made that I don't argument? even understand what that means. So instead of do unto others as you... Do unto others as you, you would have them do, do unto, unto you. you. They say that a better idea is do unto others as they would have you do unto them. So that you're respecting their Well, use an example will. to show the distinction. Um, um, okay, so say you're homosexual, mm -hmm. and I'm not. Mm -hmm. So maybe you would treat a, a homosexual with... I don't know if that's the best example. Well, let's, let's do it again. Do unto others as you would as you would have, have them, them do unto left to have them do unto you. So yeah. So let me. I'll try to come up with an example. And then the other one was do unto others as they would have you do unto them, so that you're respecting their will. So maybe you know they would have you treat them away differently than you would want to treat them. I have to have a specific example. So this yeah. has to do with respect. Exactly. Like, I, want, I, I, I want to be respected by other people, so I have to respect them. I want people to judge me by what I do, not who I am. Okay. That's the golden rule. Now, you, you show me how, what, how your, your interpretation or others' interpretations, how that differs from that. I want, I want people to respect me for what I do, not who they think I am, but for what I do. So okay. therefore, I'll respect other people for what they do, not who I think they are. Okay. Let's use the homosexuality. Okay. Yeah. So, I don't know and I don't care what your sexual orientation is. Right. I, I... And I don't care what you think my sexual orientation is. So I'm going to respect you regardless of your sexual orientation because that's how I would want you to treat me. Now show me this other inter how this other interpretation uh, impacts on that. Let's do it one more time. <coughs> I don't care about your sexual orientation. And I don't want you to care about mine. Just let's look at the way I act and look at the way you act and we'll judge each other on the okay. basis of that. I want you to care about my sexual orientation. Yeah, well, I don't. That's, that's crazy. I don't care about you. Said, there's but no I don't want you to treat me yeah. like you want to treat me. I want you to treat me like I want to be treated. So I want you to care about my sexuality or yeah. my financial situation. I just don't and there's no reason why I have to. Or at least that's that's the, the classical realist point of view. I want to I want to see what you how you act. That's all I care about you. Why are you like asking for special accommodations to be made? That's the you, point, though, right? If it's that attitude, that's exactly the point. Uh, well, 
what if I prefer to be treated in a way differently than you prefer to be treated? Well, I needed, I needed a, a specific example. Well, how would I treat you differently if I knew you were a homosexual? Maybe I want you to leave me alone instead of trying to help. Oh, that's me. what I would do. That's what the one to others is. You. I want to well, be left alone. Maybe you want to help me because you were a person who would need help. But I don't want help. Like maybe I, you know, maybe if you were starving or something like that, you would want somebody to help you. These, you would you, want money. You're raising an excellent point. So I say to you, but I don't I'm want hungry you to and I need help, and I expect you to help me. Yeah, you would say. So then I would. Do the same. If you said to me, I'm hungry and I need help, but I wouldn't impose myself on you and say, you look pretty skinny here, let me force this food on you, because I wouldn't want that to, you to do that to me. So, so doing unto others as they would have you do unto them may conflict. No, go ahead. It may conflict with you doing to others as you would have them do unto you. Like, like if you were starving, you may want me to feed you, but me, I may say, Know what? I don't care. I don't care if I live or die. Don't try to help me. So that's uh, that. I guess that's the point they're trying to get to is that I want you to treat me how I want to be treated. I don't want you to have the idea that you should treat me like you want to be treated because we may have a difference there. But I'm not I mean, sure. If the, I mean, you're raising an excellent point. Now, remember, this is all based on rationality. Right. There may be a logical flaw in this thinking that I'm just not seeing. It's all based on rationality. So if I was, I was struck by your point. So, so if somebody says, "I want to die," yeah. But well, you don't. So how dare you interfere with my desire to die? Something like that. Yeah. yeah. Maybe that's a better example. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's. If I say to you, I don't give a damn whether you live or die, does that make any sense from a rational point of view? No, but if I say I want to die, then I want you to treat me like I want to be treated. What would I do, though? What would I... What, Maybe, what? I guess, not interfere? Or something like that? I, I'm just trying to, again, come up with a good example. because. Yeah. Some people I know made this point. They said, well, what about the platinum rule? And I said, I've never heard of the platinum rule, and that's where how this... So, you, so you're driving over a bridge. I'll give you a specific example, and you tell me how this fits in. I mean, you're just raising a wonderful point. You're driving over a bridge late at night, and you notice that a person is climbing over the, over the edge of the bridge and is going to drop into uh, water, which is hundreds of feet, and will die of the impact. So you stop the car and you rush over and you say, don't do this. And the person says, I want to die. So according to the platinum rule, you, what, do you, what do you do? You push them or you just let them jump or what do you do? Does that make any sense? There's a specific example. You try to fit that into that. Um, I guess you would let them do what they wanted to do because you are not assuming that what you think is right is more important than what they think is right. Well, what, so what, are you thinking, what are you thinking when you, when you try to convince them not to jump? Yeah. What are you thinking? What, 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 what's going on in, 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 in your rational mind? That you would want somebody to stop you? Because... It's not a good idea because, because you, you want people to have hope because you yeah you because want to do the tomorrow right thing. you may think differently but it's too late it'll be too late you're making a rash decision why don't you think about this for a little while uh, and then on your own when I'm not around well my criticism of it is how do you know how can you know what another person, how well, the another person, person says wants to, to you, be treated. How dare you stop me from jumping? I'm, the person is telling okay, me Okay, so at this point they're, they told you. Yeah, so now what do you do? As a rational person, what do you do next? You still try to force your will on them because you, you, it's the right thing to do. Well, to a certain extent. I mean, right you know, the, you, you, 
you can't wrestle with these people. They may be able to overpower you and jump. That's what I'm to say. I mean, they, yeah. if they pull out a gun and they say, if you don't leave me alone and let me jump, I'm going to kill you too, then yeah. you have to back off and say, okay. They're forcing you to treat them like they want to be treated. But, but you do what you can to convince them you're at a low point right now. Why don't you give this 24 hours? and See if you feel the same way. My wife always says to me when I get angry at people, she says, this is what I want you to do. I want you to, instead of confronting them personally, write a letter to this person, getting rid of all of your resentment, put the letter in the drawer, and then if you feel that same way tomorrow, 20, then send them the letter or confront them. But give yourself a little time to think about this. Does that make sense to you? Yeah, no, I think it means, makes perfect sense. What might you conclude differently the next day? Uh, that they have a reason for their behavior? Yeah. Well, he's sitting in this class, in this education class. Many times over the next two years, you're going to have an impulse to raise your hand and say, this is nonsense. But if you control yourself, what you might conclude is, it is nonsense, but this is all a means to an end so that I could mentor young children so that they could have better lives than they ordinarily would have had without their contact with me. That it's not worth it It's in not the present. There you go. So here's a specific, I just needed time while you were talking to think of this specific example, the person tells you, first of all, you really didn't want to be there. Who wants to get involved in other people's lives? It was one of these appointment in Samaras. Have you ever heard of that? You know, we just, you're at the wrong place at the, at the wrong, wrong time. time. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know. <coughs> and uh, it was faded, though. There's nothing you could do about it. And there you are. It's late at night. You want to get home, get something to eat, and go to sleep. But there's this idiot wanting to jump off a bridge. So out of a sense of moral purpose, you stop the car and urge them not to take this rash decision, but to think about it for another day. And then try to figure out when I cross this bridge and don't do this when I come. <laughs> no, but I mean, it's, unto, to, you know, well, it's interfering. you as part of this and thyself as part of this is not like, you know, no. I really not. I really don't really want to get involved with this, but I am involved, and I'm going to try to do the right thing. And I'm going to try to convince you to think twice about what you're doing. Because that's what I would want someone to do to me if I had lost my temper, or if I was temporarily depressed, or if I was permanently depressed and I could get some kind of treatment for it. After all, there are plenty of pills that can help people who are depressed by changing the chemical composition in their, in their brains. Are we interfering with their free will when we do that? I mean, is that okay? If, in fact, it's free will and they're not being influenced by a chemical imbalance in their brain, then it's not free will anymore. Yeah, that's, that's true, too. I guess, yeah. And if it's not a chemical imbalance in the brain, maybe they have a character flaw that they have a very bad temper and can't control themselves. That's not free will either. Does that help you at all? Mm -hmm. No, I mean, I, I can see that. I can see that. Of course, ultimately what you could say is, I can't ignore what you're doing here because I can see the flaws in your decision. It's a hasty decision. Why don't you think about it? And then you hesitate for a second, and if you feel this way this tomorrow, just don't do it when I'm crossing the bridge. <laughs> no, because, no, but yeah, don't yeah. just, look, I mean, don't you see this? No, I'm, I'm, like, morally liable for this thing. I mean, don't you see this? Okay, yes. So that I won't be morally liable for it. Or if they pull a gun and they say, nice to know you. Because you do carry some responsibility 
So nobody's in this alone, because this would never occur if you were a person alone. But since we have to be in this life with other people, there's no getting away from it, the am I my brother's keeper argument. That's beautiful. I don't know. I'm just, I'm just trying so now, to... So now, I, so now what would you say to the platinum rule? That there is an element of personal responsibility involved in mm -hmm. having to interact with other humans that you can't get away from, and that means that everybody has to have some sort of standard by which they and maybe that even though that standard is different from someone else's that you know ultimately you can only be true to your own standard this standard that of right and wrong that you think I'm, I don't know it's, it's, it's a kind of a difficult one but I mean is it, there any selfishness explicit or implicit in love thy neighbor as thyself or do unto others as you would have them do unto you Yes. Is there any selfishness? Yes. You have to have some sense of self. Is there more or less selfishness in the golden rule or the platinum rule? More selfishness in the platinum rule. Well, there you are. Okay, how? Just, can you, can you I want you to treat me the way I wanted you to treat me. Okay, it's more selfishness on the part of the other person. Of course. Gotcha. Not according to some standard of decent behavior. Isn't that an interesting just point how, that you made? Just how I want to be. It's all about how I want to be treated. That's the point. Gotcha. Not how we should be treated. Gotcha. Okay. Because some ways of treating people are better than others. Clearly. And the best way to avoid that selfishness is to treat people as they act. Not as the, who they are. So I don't care what your sexual orientation. I don't care whether you're rich or poor. poor. Right. If you if you if you act as if you're starving, I have a moral responsibility to help you. Because we're responsible for what we do, no matter how we feel. I think that's a beautiful way of putting it. I'm sorry, I, the, I didn't mean to take you on such a long What are you talking tangent. about? <laughs> it's, it's the questions are the most important things. The, the questions are the, the tangents are the most interesting parts of these discussions. After all, it wouldn't be a discussion otherwise. And how did you put it before? You said, what was, how did you describe it? There's more selfishness in... You, uh, but it's, it's, I guess, like entitlement of you want special That was the love. term he used, yeah. You want special uh, uh, yeah. treatment. Instead of following a universal standard, there has to be special treatment. No, I think that's, I think that's valid. That makes, that sounds like it makes sense. 